This skill video will show you how to perform an in-cab operational inspection. You should complete this skill while wearing appropriate personal protective equipment. Park the apparatus outdoors if weather permits. Set up the inspection area. If indoors, be sure that proper ventilation equipment is in place or doors are open to vent vehicle exhaust. Diesel exhaust may contain up to 100 harmful chemicals and compounds. Do not run these engines in unvented areas for any period of time. Chalk the vehicle's wheels. Mount the vehicle cab safely. Check the seat belts slash restraints. Be sure that they are securely mounted and operate freely without binding. Make certain that the webbing is not damaged, cut, or frayed. Check that the buckles open and close freely. Check that the mirrors are not missing or broken. Make sure that the tilt slash telescopic steering wheel is in a suitable position and is functioning correctly. Adjust the seat and mirrors. Turn off all accessory electrical switches. Start the vehicle. Run the engine at low idle per local SOPs until it is warmed to its operating temperature. Make sure that these gauges are functioning in the normal operating range. Speedometer odometer, tachometer, oil pressure, fuel gauge, ammeter and or voltmeter, air pressure, coolant temperature, vacuum gauge, hydraulic pressure gauge, transmission oil temperature gauge, engine slash pump hour gauge. The DEF tank is full. 2010 and newer SCR equipped diesel engines. The DPF indicator lamp is off. 2007 and newer diesel engines. Extinguishing agent gauges. Check that the speedometer is at or very near zero with the apparatus parked. Make sure that the fuel gauge reads at least three quarters full or in accordance with departmental SOG slash SOP. Check that all other gauges register within limits specified in the operator's manual. Briefly operate all controls in the cab, checking these systems. Electrical equipment switches, turn signal switches, high beam headlight switches, heating and air conditioning controls, radio controls, public address systems, if so equipped. Audible warning device controls, sirens, auto warning horns, air horns, backup alarms, seat belt fastening indicators, and door open indicators. Before testing audible warning devices, don appropriate hearing protection. Do not test the operation of audible warning devices indoors or if anyone is standing in front of or near the apparatus. This can cause hearing damage to that person. Test these devices when no one else is in a position to be harmed. Controls for any computer equipment in the cab, mobile data terminal, mobile computer terminal, etc. Windshield wiper controls, check the fluid reservoir in the cab, window defroster controls, load management system, pump, turret controls, turret valves, drive system interlock control. Check steering wheel free play. Noting in the apparatus log or on the inspection form insufficient or excessive free play. Schedule repair with a certified mechanic if there is inappropriate free play. Excess play that does not result in the actual movement of the vehicle's front tires. With the engine off, wheels chalked, transmission in neutral, full air tanks, and parking brake released, press the brake pedal to the floor. Note any sounds of air leaking or position of needles. After one minute, air pressure should not drop more than three PSI for straight chassis vehicles or four PSI for tractor-drawn aerial apparatus. With the engine off and the master switch on, pump the brake pedal continually to lower air tank pressure. The warning light and buzzer should activate before 60 PSI. After the previous step is complete, with the parking brake released, continue to pump the brake pedal until the air brake control sets automatically by the button popping out. Start the engine and let air pressure build up to normal. When the needle stops climbing, the air compressor has cut out. Apply the brake pedal, 
lowering the pressure in the tanks by 5 to 10 PSI increments, stopping at 85 PSI. Ensure the air gauge needle begins to indicate a pressure increase following the test. Document the inspection and any maintenance actions and report any deficiencies per local policy.